Hello everybody, we are live. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, this is the second episode in our full part self-care with essential oils series. And I'm joined here live with Patty Tinholt. Now she is the expert in essential oils, especially for mothers and pregnancy and trying to conceive in all these things. And she's got five kids herself, so she really knows what she's talking about in terms of self-care throughout motherhood throughout all stages and tonight's topic second episode is all about trying to conceive and we've talked previously about what we can do what the things we can use naturally to optimize our fertility energetics and using essential oils is one of those methods so patty's going to give us a, an amazing tutorial on how to use these essential oils as part of a detox program, as part of making sure that you're in good health, all the kind of positivity you need to create a fertile environment inside and and, and keep that pregnancy as well. And there's a special bonus for those of you who watch the whole episode. At the end, Patty will be revealing her top fertility blend. So, Patty, thank you so much for joining us again. This is fantastic to have you here. Please. Take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Lynn. It's so fun to get to talk about this. Um, I have to say I'm kind of out of my pregnancy days now. I have five kids and my youngest is three and she's going to stay the youngest. <laughs> um, <laughs> never say never. <laughs> oh, no. For sure. <laughs> but I'm completely excited to talk about this because it's a very amazing topic. And I actually only had essential oils for my last pregnancy. And I, I honestly can't even imagine how I had my first four without the benefits and, and the aid that I got from essential oils before pregnancy, during, and then in recovery as well. It was really amazing. All right, so I wanna just talk about candida because most people think that candida just means a vaginal yeast infection. But in fact, candida can be system-wide, like from head to toe. If you have unexplained skin issues, it can be candida related. If you have unexplained digestive issues, it can be candida related. If you have unexplained fatigue or, um, or brain fog or sleep disruptions, that can be candida. And if you have unexplained infertility, that can also be candida or anything that's unexplained related to, uh, to your cycle, to reproductive wellness, to having predictable uh, cycles especially, all of that can be candida related. And it is so often overlooked in the medical community because it can run such a huge number of symptoms that you can have. So, you know, doctors can easily um, recognize and you can recognize for yourself, right, when you have a vaginal yeast infection um, and there's very simple treatments for that. Now, I would always prefer to use something natural as a treatment, but the thing is the symptoms can be all over your body, right? Digestive, mental, sleep, and your reproductive system. So if you have the luxury of some time before your window of wanting to conceive, the very first thing I would do is create the healthiest possible environment. So, you know, you know about diet, right? You're going to avoid, you know, foods that are full of things like dyes and artificial flavors and things like that. So I'm not going to go all into the diet side of it, but candida is something that's often overlooked when it comes to creating a healthy environment in your body. And when you're getting ready to conceive, then, you know, creating a pristine environment is exactly what you want. So the first thing that I would do for getting rid of candida, and, and I, I don't just mean, again, I want to say it, not just a vaginal yeast infection. We can have candida throughout our whole bodies, but, but not have a vaginal yeast infection. We can have many, many other symptoms. So the first thing that I would want to do is to remove as much processed sugar as you possibly can from your life. Because of course, candida is yeast. Yeast feeds on sugar. The more you feed it sugar, the more it's going to proliferate. So that's number one, right? That's obvious the, the first thing. Lots of water, right? You want to flush your body and, and keep it really clean inside. And then I would start choosing some essential oils that can help to get rid of the bad bacteria. Now, your body is this amazing place where you actually have 
10 times more bacteria cells in your body than you do human cells. So, you know, one might say, maybe I'm more bacteria. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of amazing. But your body needs this good bacteria, right? We do, it does a lot for us, especially in our digestive system and with our immune systems as well. 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So you want good gut health, good digestive health. So the, the way that essential oils work in our body is that they're actually able to help our bodies, to assist our bodies in distinguishing between good and bad bacteria. That's really important because we want to rid our bodies of the bad bacteria and keep the good stuff, maximize the good stuff. So essential oils can actually help our bodies, help our cells to do that. So a few essential oils that I would choose very specifically would be one any citrus oil. So the, the ones that I love are orange, lime, lemon, grapefruit, any of those are spectacular. So you want to even just take one or two drops in water and just drink that throughout the day, right? It's helping you to stay hydrated. But those citrus oils actually can pull toxins out of your cells. And then of course, the water just flushes it out. So you want to do that. And then they can also, because they have antibacterial properties, they can also go to work on the bad bacteria. And again, the drinking the water is going to flush that out of your body. So any citrus oil is the first thing I would do. The next thing I would incorporate are some uh, antifungal essential oils, right? Yeast is a fungus. We want to deal with bacteria, right? Get rid of the bad bacteria, keep the good, ensure you've got some good gut health. And then what we want to do is get rid of yeast because yeast is the fungus, right? So we're off the sugar, so we're not feeding it. So the primary ones that I would choose would be melaleuca or tea tree oil. It's the same, it's the same product, just it can have different names in different countries, or some people know it by one name, some people know it by the other. So, so this is a really powerful antifungal, but it's also a really gentle and mild essential oil. So powerful with its antifungal properties, but gentle on your skin, gentle for your body, not making any huge changes. Changes. Okay, so how, some, how are some ways that we could use melaleuca really effectively? Well, the first thing I would do if I was in the pre-trying to conceive stage is Ooh. I would be using melaleuca essential oil, tea tree oil, on the bottoms of my feet every single day. I'd be doing that morning and night um, as a way of letting that essential oil become systemic. Now we put essential oils on the bottoms of our feet because there's a slow absorption there because the skin is thicker, right? So, uh, and so there's way less chance of any kind of skin irritation. Some people don't love the smell of melaleuca. If you have a melaleuca tea tree oil that has a really like acidic or stringent aroma, it's almost like, I want to say like gasoline, don't put that on your body. Okay. That's just, that, that should be the first warning sign for you that it's not a good product. But anyone who missed episode one, please go back and watch that because Patty took us through the whole 101 class on what to look for in good quality therapeutic grade essential oils, which is really important to have the, the right quality type of your if you're going to get any benefit from that um, and she also went through the different methods of applying essential oils um, so it, we're, we're going to cover more the, um, if you want more details on that just go into and watch the first episode there so yeah perfect right. thank you for that Lynn so you want to put them on the bottoms of your feet and just you know that reminder that if it smells bad like, don't put it on your body right you don't have to love the aroma but if it has like that gasoline or acidic aroma or it doesn't feel good when you're breathing it in your nose like that's a warning sign poor quality don't put it on your body on your body every essential oil even if you don't love the aroma it should still pass the smell test which is that it should still smell um, clean and fresh and like a plant and if it doesn't if it smells like perfume if it smells like gasoline if it smells like it smells acidic okay it's it's not a good product so that's just you know you can trust yourself absolutely on that so I'd be putting the melaleuca, the tea tree, on the bottoms of my feet every single morning, just, just a drop, one drop on the bottom of each foot. Just rub that in and then get yourself dressed. 
um, and it's going to become systemic and absorbed. Now, if you know that candida is a big issue in your body, then you want to do a second step and rub a little bit across your abdomen every morning. Um, and that's just going to target it right in the intestinal area. It's going to target your reproductive organs. So you just want to uh, rub it on there again every morning. Use a drop of coconut oil. So like a drop of your coconut oil in your hand, a drop of your tea tree oil in your hand, rub your hands together to blend them, and then just go ahead and rub them right across your abdomen. That's a perfectly great thing to do every single And you only time. need one drop of it. If it's a high grade oil, you just put one drop yeah. and mix that in with your base. Yeah, and the effectiveness is going to come from the regular use. So don't don't think, oh, I, I don't I don't have time for this. I cannot, you know, wait for a month. I'm just gonna put 20 drops on today. Like, don't do that. Okay. This mm. is not a product where you use more and then stop using it. It's a product where you use a drop at a time and you do it consistently over a period of time, and that's how you get the best results okay it's consistent use that's going to give you the best results so and while you're using your melaleuca you definitely want to be drinking tons of water and you can put you know that citrus drop of citrus in your water but you know one maybe two drops in a big glass of water and continue to drink that on a regular basis throughout the day Okay, so those are the first two things that I would do. And then along with that, and I would give that process easily a couple of weeks, people. Okay, I, I wouldn't make that something that you think you can only do for one or two days. You really want to give your body a chance to benefit from those essential oils. Daily. Yeah, so about two to three weeks anyway. And then the second step you're going to do is to choose a really super high quality probiotic. So you want to then stop using the Melaleuca essential oil for, for a week or two. And I would do easily 10 days of taking a probiotic three times a day. Okay, so that's this thing for three more. times a day that you, that you drink. I would take a probiotic three times a day for 10 days as a way of, of just populating the best healthy flora into your gut. Now, the best quality probiotic um, is one that is double encapsulated. What that means is it's a capsule with a second capsule on the outside. This allows the first capsule to digest in the stomach acid, and the second capsule actually passes into the intestinal tract before before it opens, because that's where you want the probiotic. That's where you want that flora to be. If it opens, so if you're taking a non-double encapsulated um, probiotic, that powder is just released into your stomach, most of it gets killed by your stomach acid. So you could be taking 20 a day and you're still only getting a tiny, tiny benefit. So you want one that's double encapsulated so that it passes into the intestinal tract before it opens. Okay, so I would do this, you know, this is a, a one month process, right? It's not going to happen overnight. You want to spend two to three weeks um, using your melaleuca and your citrus oil and water. And then you want to spend a good 10 days doing three doses of probiotics a day. Um, and again, still avoiding sugar and, and highly acidic foods or um, you know, things like, like coffee and sodas, right? Avoiding that as much as you can so that you're creating a nice clean environment in your body. Mm -hmm. um, and then after, after that period where you've done, you know, the two to three weeks on your melaleuca, about 10 days on your probiotic three times a day, then mm -hmm. you can switch to your probiotic once a day. It's completely safe to take probiotics throughout your pregnancy. And I would not miss taking, a, you know, one capsule a day throughout my pregnancy and, you know, throughout my life, right? Like you may as well just stay on it. It's fantastic. So those are some really key things. And, and you know, it, it probably depends on the healthcare providers that you see, but, but my experience and what I have seen and learned is that almost every single person in our modern population uh, has an excess of candida in their bodies. So I just feel like if you've got a window of time before conceiving, then you may as well take the opportunity to get rid of as much candida from your body as you can and create that pristine environment for your baby. Okay, mm. so that's going to be your first step.
Now, let's talk about something else that you can do that's really important before, uh, while you're planning to get pregnant, um, and that is having healthy progesterone levels. So progesterone, you know, ebbs and flows during our cycle, right? It, and it has some effect on our mood as well. Um, but we want really healthy progesterone levels at the start of our pregnancy because that's what's going to actually keep us pregnant. Now, I know for some, right, the issue is you can conceive, but you can't stay pregnant, right? Especially in those really critical couple of early weeks, sometimes before you even know you're pregnant, you're not pregnant, right? So what you want is healthy progesterone levels so that you can, once, you know, once conception has happened, so that you stay pregnant, that your body keeps the pregnancy and, you know, and sustains those early, early days long enough that, that the pregnancy is able to be successful and go to full term. So the essential oil that you would want to use to help support that might actually surprise you. It's actually grapefruit. Grapefruit essential oil is super good for having healthy progesterone levels. So, so even throughout your whole cycle, even at, at times when, when getting pregnant is not, uh, is not in the plans, right? Progesterone keeps you kind of level-headed and balanced, right? It's that, that loss of progesterone that can, that can affect our mood and our irritability. So you really want grapefruit as something that can support you throughout your whole cycle, but especially during your trying to conceive days so that you're having a healthy progesterone level okay a couple ways of using grapefruit and it's such a gorgeous fresh aroma almost everybody it. loves it right so um so what you want to do is put a drop in your water you could start your day with that just start with a glass of room temperature water with a drop of grapefruit in it if you're the kind of person who carries a, a glass water bottle with you throughout the day okay not plastic when we're using essential oils but a glass water bottle Put your drop of grapefruit in there. And even if you don't have the grapefruit with you, but you refill your water bottle during the day, you're still going to kind of taste it because it'll be kind of around the edge of the bottle, right? So it's good to do that as a way of, you know, keeping yourself not just hydrated, but again, continuing to flush the toxins from your body. Uh, you can use grapefruit oil on the bottoms of your feet as well. Uh, some people like to use it again rubbed across their abdomen so that it's kind of a targeted approach. I would definitely, if that's what you're going to do, I would definitely use the drop of coconut in your hand and then the drop of grapefruit before applying it topically to the same area on a regular basis just to avoid any chance of skin irritation. Okay, that's the, that's the primary reason. It also just uh, seals it to your skin so it doesn't evaporate off. Uh, and you're getting the maximum benefit. So I want you to bring grapefruit into your life, okay? The two big ones I've talked about so far are tea tree and grapefruit. Those are ones that you really want to have. And then, again, just, you know, in the vein of, you know, you know you're moving towards trying to conceive. So what are the things that you can do to keep your entire cycle healthy and your hormones at the proper levels? Um, you know, especially if you have an irregular cycle and you want to get it on track. So a third essential oil that's great for women's hormones and just keeping us, you know, regular, right? Keeping a um, keeping our cycle where it should be um, is actually clary sage. So this is uh, like an herbal kind of floral uh, aroma, really beautiful. Um, not an inexpensive. Uh, oil, I have to say. I mean, compared to say the tea tree or the the grapefruit, it is definitely a more costly essential oil. But Clary sage, how are you writing that? Clary sage, C L A R Y, okay. and then the second word is sage, S A G E. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, perfect. Super great oil. So this again is one. Uh, this is one that you wouldn't take internally, but you would definitely use for just keeping your hormones balanced and having, you know, a healthy menstrual cycle um, and supporting ovulation as well. So you, you can use this one topically, rub it on your abdomen where your uterus and ovaries are, or rub it on the bottoms of your feet. Now, if you're in a situation where it's like, well, I could kind of conceive at any time. So which one should I be doing on my feet? Should I do the grapefruit or the melaleuca or the clary sage? You know what? You can kind of do them all. Or you can, um, you know, focus for the month on doing the candida detox, right? Definitely do that. Or you can move right into just using clary sage 
all month long, you know, month after month to support your cycle. Once you, you know you're pregnant is when you can stop using the clary sage, okay? So melaleuca can, is safe throughout any stage of pregnancy. As I said, it's a great antifungal, but a really gentle and mild essential oil. So you could use that throughout uh, your pregnancy for different reasons, grapefruit as well. Um, but the clary sage is one that once you're pregnant, you can stop using that because it, it's really, uh, it, it's balancing women's healthy hormones in terms of their menstrual cycle. So it's, it's unnecessary when you're no longer having a menstrual cycle. So once you know you're pregnant, you can stop using that one. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's unlikely to cause any harm. So if you didn't know you were pregnant and you were still using a little bit of clary sage, okay. you don't have to panic about that. It's not going to harm your, your baby. Um, but at the same time, this is one, and we'll talk about it in our in our next uh, chat together. That how um, as you're moving towards labor, this is actually one that you'd want to reintroduce when you're when you know that your body is starting to get ready for labor. Okay, so keep it keep it on standby. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just just put it on the shelf for nine months, <laughs> and then absolutely come back to it. It's fantastic. So just in closing, I. I just have one little sort of gift for people who are really looking at bringing essential oils into their lives. I'm going to tell you a blend that's considered to be like a fertility blend. And you would use these essential oils all together every day and apply twice daily to the uterus and ovary area. Okay, so here are the oils. They are, of course, clary sage. Clary sage is so, so good for your whole reproductive system. Fennel, right? Fennel with that kind of licorice aroma, right? Super good for your digestive system, but also super good for women's hormones. Ooh. Third one is geranium. Now, geranium has a pretty strong aroma, right? If you smell a geranium yeah. flower, it's not one of the ones that you go, oh, it smells beautiful. No, my mom, had, her balcony is full of geraniums in the summer. Yeah. And I must say they're gorgeous, but yeah, they're not, they're not roses. <laughs> no, no, they're not. But they can be pleasant in their own way. So you're going to include that one. And then lavender. Most people enjoy the aroma of lavender. And, uh, and it's just very good for keeping you also in a state of calm, yeah, right? Well, you want to do that. That. Because it, this can be stressful. It can be joyful, but it can also be stressful. So it's a great oil to add in. And then the last one is bergamot essential oil. Now that's a citrus oil, but unlike the other citrus oils, it's extremely calming. Um, whereas like orange and grapefruit, those are more like uplifting and invigor invigorating, right? Mm -hmm. So it's those five, was that five? Yeah. Yeah, Clary sage, fennel, geranium, lavender, and bergamot. Yeah, exactly. And so you would use those together. Now, the way I like to do that when I'm doing a combination of oils like this is to use, uh, to put them all together in a bottle and then add some coconut oil to it so that it's all ready to go. I'm not fiddling around with six different bottles every day to try and apply it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you'd want to do approximately is, how can I describe this? About twice as much clary sage and fennel as geranium, lavender, and bergamot, okay? So say, for example, you did uh, about 20 drops total of clary sage and fennel, so maybe 10 drops each. Mm -hmm. Then you do about 10 drops total of geranium, lavender, and bergamot. The numbers don't matter exactly. It's not a recipe, <laughs> right? We're not making muffins. It's not a recipe. <laughs> Right, but approximately twice as much clary sage and fennel as geranium, lavender, and bergamot. And then add your coconut oil to it. How um, much coconut oil would you add to that? See, it's hard to, it depends on, you know, the size of your container, right? So you're doing kind of a ratio, but overall, I would say your ratio of essential oils to coconut oil is about one to four or one to five. Some people prefer something really diluted, like one drop of essential oil to 25 drops of coconut oil. Some people like it 50-50, right? You've got 20 drops of 
for, of essential oil, you use 20 drops of coconut. So it, it varies person to person, but I would say, especially for people new to essential oils and starting out, see how you do with the ratio of about one drop essential oils to about four or five drops of coconut. Okay, well, look, Patty, this has been another excellent, excellent episode with so many tips. I'm gonna write all of this up uh, and it will all be available. Just click on the link and sign up on the store, send you everything through, okay? Perfect, good, thank you. Thank you very much, Patty, and I'll see you tomorrow.